Hey, what's up nerds? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about a feature called port binding. But before we get to that, let's just all admit something. We have all been playing around with some kind of technology at some point. Maybe we even got really good at it. You know, we had certain features or settings within that, that product that we just kind of passed up. We left it to the default and never really asked the question, what is it used for? So that's what we're gonna talk about today, is port binding. So I'm gonna show you what this is inside of vCenter, what this feature is, and the two options that you have to decide. I can almost assure you this is a setting most people have passed up probably hundreds of times when playing around in vCenter and vSphere in general. So I'm really excited to talk about that. But before we get to, I need you to do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, do whatever you gotta do, turn the bell on, whatever you got, so that you can make sure you get the latest and greatest from Nerdy Tech. So that said, let's jump into the good stuff. All right, so let's talk about port binding. What is it? Now let's go ahead and draw this out. I think that's the easiest way for me to explain this. All right, so let's say in our environment, we have a few ESX hosts. And I'm just gonna go ahead and write host one, host two, or H2, host three. All right, on top of those hosts, we have VMs. And I'm just gonna draw a little VM here. And we'll say we have another VM there. That's all we really need for now. Now, port binding is a setting that is available on the distributed switch. And we should know by now, if you haven't watched my other videos, then you should go watch them on the distributed switch. But we should know by now that the idea of the distributed switch is that it spans multiple hosts. So we configure it once and it kind of looks something like that. So I'll just put VDS for distributed switch. So that distributed switch you know, spans multiple physical hosts. And the beauty of that is we can configure a port group once and it's easily accessible from all of our hosts. Most importantly, that means our VMs can then connect to that port group and subsequently the distributed switch. Now here's where port binding comes into play. Now I want you to think of this really ugly switch here. I'm gonna fill it in a little bit. I want you to think about this like it's a, a physical switch, like it's a, a real switch sitting you know, in a data center or something like that. We plug in cables to it, that sort of thing, right? So it has ports on it. And typically the way things work is when we connect a VM to a port group, it essentially by default, it connects up to that distributed switch and it allocates a port. So just, it's almost kind of like we have a physical switch and you create a port or install a port and we plug a cable into it. And that's basically the default or the static setting. So if you leave it to that, what that essentially means is that, is that this VM right here is always connected to that port. We can shut down the VM, we can power it on, we can reboot it, whatever the case is. It has kind of reserved that port once we connected it to a port group. The difference though is that we also have this other setting and it is called ephemeral. And ephemeral is kind of similar because it will still allocate a port for that VM, but it doesn't do it, uh, it doesn't reserve the same port and use it all the time. So what it does is it allocates a port by the host, so the host does the allocation of that port on the distributed switch when the VM powers on. So that port, you know, today we could connect, you know, we power on the VM, it gets port 12. Well, let's say we shut down the VM, we power it back on. Now it might have port 14, for example. So essentially that's the difference. So static is your first option. That is where that VM always reserves that one port. It just owns that port. As long as it's connected to that distributed port group, it owns that port. Ephemeral, the other option, it is going to connect to a different port upon boot up or be allocated a port by the host every time that VM connects to that port group or is powered on, I should say. Now, you might be asking, what's the difference? Why would I pick one over the other? Well, essentially, the benefit between the two is really what it comes to is when we have, I'm just going to write E for ephemeral because I am bad at spelling. All right, so static, actually, you know, the worst part is I can spell ephemeral. I'm actually pretty good at spelling. I don't even know why I said that. But that said, I'm not going to prove it to you. Now is not the time. All right, <laughs> so we have the static option. Why would we pick that? Well, first of all, that's the default, and we'll see that in a second in vCenter. 
The benefit of static is that it's easy, uh, and I guess it's lower overhead because we don't have to keep recalculating and figuring out what port to connect that VM to. Now with ephemeral, or E, the benefit there comes when we lose vCenter. See, if we lose vCenter with this option with static, say vCenter goes down, we put an X through it. If we lose vCenter, we cannot change that port assignment from the host standpoint for that VM, if that makes sense. So we can't go to that host, even though vCenter is down and the host is up, we can't go to that host and reassign that port because it has lost that connection to vCenter. That is the downfall to static. And that brings me into what I was about to say, which is the benefit of ephemeral, which is in this scenario, let's say we lose vCenter, we can still go into this host and we can reassign that port, we can make changes. It's for this reason that typically the ephemeral option is more of a recovery feature, so that if you do lose vCenter, you have a failure of vCenter, you need to change your ports, you can change the port assignment or the port binding type so that you can change that port assignment without vCenter being up. So that's it in a nutshell. Typically it is a recovery type of feature. Now I do wanna get inside of vCenter just show you how to set this if you're not familiar with it. So let's take a look at this. So here we are inside of vCenter and if we go over to the networking globe, we then want to select our port group. In this case, it will be this Mike's Management Distributed Port Group. If I select that, Look at this, I have a listing of my ports. I'm selecting this ports column right here. Look, I have Debian Linux 01 as port 14. Now, as far as how this port group is configured, let's go to configure. This is where you would set it. It says port binding, static binding. Now, if we wanted to change that, we can hit edit. And like I said, we can do ephemeral, also known as no binding, but we can't actually make that change while VMs are actively connected to it. So if I were to try to connect to change this to ephemeral, let me go ahead and do that. I'll hit okay. Look at this. It says a specified parameter was not correct spec dot type. And if you hit more tasks, it gives you a little more information, but essentially it's because I have a VM currently connected to this port group. So let's change that. Let's go ahead and go to our VM and let's edit the settings. And let's just go ahead. I'm just going to assign this network adapter to any network. It doesn't matter right now. We just need it off of that port group for a second. All right, so let's make sure that takes effect. Okay, it did. Now we can go back to that port group, go back to our network globe, to our port group. Now, if we go to edit, we can change to ephemeral. So I'm gonna change there and hit okay. All right, now that that's changed, we see that reflected here. Here's our first indication that something is different. If I go to ports, by default, you see a listing of a bunch of port numbers and whatever VMs are connected to it. Notice I have nothing here. Now, watch as we go back to the inventory and we go to Debian Linux, and let's go ahead and edit that one more time. And let's just connect it back to our port group. So that would be this one right here. That's the one we're working on. And let's hit okay and okay. All right, so that's done. Now let's go back to our distributed switch. Look at this. Now we see it's allocated port 22 and we see it's the, that's connected to Debian Linux 01. Now just to prove my point, I said that once it's assigned that port, it will change. So let's go ahead and prove this. So I'm gonna go back to the inventory and let's just mess this VM up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and power it off. I'll give it a second, okay. And I'm gonna power it on. All right, so all we did is power it down, power it back up. Now, if we go back to our port group one last time, let's give this a second. Let's go ahead, maybe I didn't give it long enough. All right, let's power this off again. All right, so let's double check our port assignments. Okay, we still have one in here. All right, so you probably saw that it took a minute, so I powered it off, and then I just gave it a little bit of extra time before I powered it back on. I think somehow I, I powered it off and probably kicked it on before it had a chance to recycle that old port, but you saw what happened. When the VM came down, I gave it, you know, five, 10 seconds, came, you know, brought it back up, 
and we see now it has port 23. So that is the difference. With static binding, that wouldn't have happened. So that said, as far as you know, using this feature in production, I would recommend you don't change it. It's good to know that it exists. It's good to know what the option means. But, and you know, at the end of the day, it's not something we really have a good reason to go and play around with. So that said, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you subscribe because I love having you here. So do that before you leave. But either way, until next time, stay nerdy.